This is 2LO, the London station of the British Broadcasting Company calling. 2LO calling. Radio, one of the largest sources of news, sport, music and entertainment of our society. Radio has been around for a very long time, with first experiments involving its development dating back to 1885. However, today radio has been dwarfed by the likes of television and the internet. With so much focus in society on films and television, does anyone listen to radio anymore? No. Nope. I do. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, sometimes. If, if the football's on radio, yeah, I'll listen to it. For nearly 100 years, radio has been an integral part of modern society. German scientist Heinrich Hurst in 1885 was the first to prove that electric wavelengths could be transmitted and received wirelessly. And when Nikola Tesla made the first public demonstration of this discovery in 1895, the idea of communicating wirelessly through sound was infectious to the scientific community. Eventually, businessmen and entrepreneurs began to take notice of the potential of radio, and broadcast towers and wireless devices began to appear worldwide. And with the launch of BBC Radio in 1922, radio became hugely popular with the British public. Well, um, I wanted to be a journalist uh, when I was a teenager, and so when I was at university, I went and did lots of things. I, I, I joined the student newspaper. I also went and joined the, um, the student radio stage. So I kind of developed a taste for it while I was at university. Today, there is a vast choice of radio stations for the public to choose from, and even small-scale university stations as well, run by students. I decided to join Stag Radio in my first year because I'd kind of tried my hand at other things, and I thought radio was something that you don't get as much of an opportunity to do at home. So I, I joined in my first year, and after a couple of years, decided I wanted to run the place. Well, yeah, I, I guess it was me. I, um, what motivated me was the the want to to explore radio as a comedy medium, because I think a lot of comedy is really physical, yeah. and so using using just audio was like a, a really exciting challenge, um, and there's a whole other dimension for us to explore. Yeah. As a radio consumer, my job at a radio station has affected me in that I do listen to a lot more of Stag Radio than I probably would have done if I wasn't a part of it. I do listen to radio in, in a very different way now um, because I'm, 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 I suppose I'm always critiquing it, whether it's us or whether it's Radio 4, Radio 5, when you hear an interview on, on Radio 5 and the presenter asks a really long-winded question and you're thinking, oh, just get to the point, you didn't need to ask that question. So actually, what I suppose the interesting thing is that uh, at times you still find it compelling and you still find it interesting in the way that uh, people who don't work in, in radio will, but I think you're also listening to the presenter and listening, to, and listening out for the journalism that's being done so that you can say, my goodness, that was a good piece of radio and I can only imagine the kind of work and effort that went into creating it. I'd say because I'm involved in radio, I appreciate and listen to it a lot more. I don't know about you. Yeah, I, I tend to get involved in radio a lot more. Yeah. I think with TV, people don't really get involved very much. With radio, you're constantly getting people calling in, texting in, and I tend yeah. to do that now, now that I've kind of been on the other end of it and exactly. seen the conversations that you can have. Well, I listened to NPR growing up a lot, which is National Public Radio in the States. Uh, we used to listen to it a lot in the car on the way to school. So we just listen to like local radio stations. It's an interesting one, really. I, mean, I, I, I don't can't really recall growing up with radio in any great sense. I mean, my father is a big listener to Radio Four, and so that was always on. And so the radio was always on, and we used to listen to to radio plays quite a lot when I was growing up. And so I suppose um, you know my attention was caught by that. But I can't honestly say that radio was something that I loved as a child. Not hugely. Actually, that's a lie. Tell a lie, because my dad worked in radio when he was younger. <laughs> um, God knows what he did now, but he, um, in some part, was responsible for scouting potential people, and he can tell a, a radio voice from a mile away. Um, both of my parents, and in fact all of my family and friends, listen to the radio in their cars, at home during the cleaning and bits and pieces like that, so they have all interact with it. The thing I, I really love about radio, and I suppose one of the big things about radio over anything else, is I think that there is a bigger connection between the people listening to radio 
than and 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 and, and consuming it than there are, are people reading or watching television because I think that when you're the radio is like a voice sitting in the corner of your room it's like your friend it's someone speaking to you out the corner of your ear you might be half listening you might be completely listening but therefore you become engaged with it you often talk back to it uh, I find <laughs> you know you in a way you probably don't do because the other I think TV and newspapers and online just feels much more remote. You're, you know, you're, you're much less close to it. Whereas radio, it really is like that. There's, it's a person you're coming into your home and being your friend, and 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 that kind of sense of warmth, that sense of closeness, I think that other mediums don't have. I like listening to the radio because it generally holds a lot of mainstream music that I can't be bothered to buy or download. So it's nice to have a way of listening to it and all the current songs. In today's world, the steady march of technology provides us with more and more ways to receive our entertainment, the obvious main contender being television. Statistics show that out of the 26 million homes in the United Kingdom, 97% have digital televisions, whereas only 44.3% of homes have access to a DAB digital radio. With such a high amount of this visual format dominating the entertainment industry, and seemingly entertainment at home, where does radio stand against these media giants? I think it's not anywhere near as relevant as it used to be because of television. So TV has taken over more, yeah. but radio is still quite good to listen to if you're in the car or yeah. running or something. Yeah. You do lose something. Sometimes there is a story which is clearly visual. Um, I, 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 the, the example I'm thinking of is, is actually not a serious one, it's a funny one, but there was a, a moment uh, a couple of years ago where there was a, a, a video, a YouTube video, of a man with, with his dog running through um, Richmond Park and the dog was chasing the deers and he was shouting and, and it was hilarious, you know, it was a very funny video and you couldn't really do that story on radio. So I think there are times when, when there are visual stories, um, when, when something clearly de demands pictures, um, I mean, you, that's not to say you can't create pictures with words. That's one of the amazing things. Radio can create a picture in your head ab about what's going on, and that's a, that's, that's a wonderful thing. But I think sometimes there are moments where the, the story, the what's going on, moves beyond uh, words, and I think that that's one of its big... That is its, its disadvantage, really, I suppose. Um, I think a lot of people rush to compare television and radio, and it's an easy comparison to make because, you know, you sit there with, you know, oh... The X Factor gets 10 million you know, viewers old, but BBC Breakfast Show gets 500,000 today. Um, like television, they're very hard to gauge on listenership and viewership. Um, television and radio are both passive activities, whereas tele but, but television to actually watch something you're intentional to watch it. Radio is something you sit back and enjoy. I think it's a hard battle for radio to face with television. Obviously, television is usually premeditated in, in terms of its shows, in which case they can... Um, do tests beforehand, see what works, what doesn't. I think they. I don't think they should be compared. I think they're they're different. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, both have their place in society, and I don't think it's a case of radio versus TV, as people always think. Yeah. I think radio is this this as you say this audio medium, this like communicating community kind of thing. Yeah. Um, TV is is a completely different thing. You sit in the lounge oh, yeah, to watch TV. You can't you can't put TV on in the car. It's not. Community can't call up the TV really. No, yeah, yeah. Like, it's not, it's a completely different thing. Despite television's apparent dominance, it seems that radio isn't going anywhere anytime soon. 90% of the British population tuned into a radio station every week in 2013, with 74% of that in the home and 61% through car radios. Indeed, most data suggests that radio listening is on the rise, most notably in online streaming which saw a 37% increase in use from 2012 to 13. With these promising results for the present, what does the future hold for radio? I don't know, but it seems like it's dying off slowly right now, so I'm not sure about the future. I think it's always going to have a place. It's the best way of listening to new music, I think. Um, in the next 10 years, it's probably going to move more onto online rather than sort of physical broadcast. The next decade, the next couple of decades, it'll be gone. I think there will always be radio in the same way there will always be music. Um, television is only becoming more expensive to make, uh, it is only becoming more competitive. If anything, I think television is far more at risk than radio because of the internet. I think uh, the internet may be a platform for radio, but the internet isn't a platform for television, it's a platform for shows and it's a platform for videos and I think you'll find television ending far earlier than radio does. It's a bright future for radio. I think it will just keep going. I can't see I can't see a society where people don't stick the radio on in the yeah. car.
can't replace it. No, it's irreplaceable. It's not like a CD where you can upgrade and download. You can't do that with radio. You just go digital. <laughs> I think radio will survive technological advances. I think they will just serve to make radio more accessible than it already is. There's so many um, sort of promotions that mean that radio is still putting seeds in into society that will grow and blossom in decades, years to come. Um, I think radio will always be with us, but I think the way we listen to radio will change dramatically. A radio, kind of a little box in, in a room, that, that is going to change, that is going to die. But, but actually, I think radio is here to stay. I, I, I don't think, I mean, it, I, I just think that there's something about it which means it will stay. It may not stay in quite the way we think it will, will but I think it is here to stay. For the present, radio will still be around for the foreseeable future. The future, as always, is unpredictable and uncertain. But if current trends continue, radio has promising prospects and will still be with us for a very long time.